I'd like to do an example now of what happens to light at a particular boundary. And here's a particular example question that might be very typical of what you'd see on a test. If light of a certain wavelength, 550 nanometers, uh, is traveling through air and is incident on a slab of transparent material such that the incident angle at the boundary is 40 degrees and the uh, exiting angle out of the boundary is 26 degrees, then I could ask you questions like, what is the index of refraction for this material and how long is the wavelength for this light in this material? This might be helpful to start with a picture. Here might be the boundary going into this material. I know that I have air up here and this is some medium down here. I don't know what it is. I'm going to draw a perpendicular and I know that I'm coming in at 40 degrees. 40 degrees is just almost as big as coming out straight in the diagonal. Remember 45 degrees would be the straight diagonal there. And it says that I'm coming out of this boundary at 26 degrees, so it's a little bit closer to the perpendicular. It looks like that. Right away, I kind of know that um, the index for this material down here must be larger than the index for air up here because it's bending toward the perpendicular. But I'm going to use Snell's law to tell me that. I'm going to say n1 sine theta1 is equal to n2 sine of theta2. And I already know most things here. I know that n1 is the index refraction of air, which is pretty close to 1. I know the, in the incident angle is 40 degrees. I know the outgoing angle, that's 26 degrees. So the only thing I don't know in this expression is n2. I'm going to move everything over to one side of this equation so that I can have a solution for n2. n2 will equal n1 times the ratio sine of theta 1 over sine of theta 2. And that will equal 1.0, to good approximation, times the sine of 40 degrees times the sine of, or divided by the sine of 26 degrees. And I don't have those numbers memorized, but I encourage you to plug them into a calculator. And you find out that this is like about 1.47. If I were to look up uh, the index refraction of various materials, this is pretty close to the index refraction of quartz, for example. So quartz is a, a particular kind of crystal. So that's all you would need to do for that part of the problem. If I asked you then the second part, which is what's the wavelength of the light in that material, it's important to remember that the speed of light in that material is always equal to C over N. And if I have to remember that V equals lambda F, whether I'm out here or out here, if V is decreasing because I've gone into this high index material and frequency is constant, then lambda is decreasing. And as I said earlier, the lambda in the material will equal the lambda in the air times the ratio N1 over N2. And this would be 550 nanometers times the ratio of 1.0 in the numerator divided by what I just found out, 1.47 in the denominator, because I just calculated 1.47. This turned out to be about 374 nanometers. So 550 nanometers is something uh, closer to the green. Uh, it's in the visible spectrum. 374 nanometers is more like blue or ultraviolet light. It's a smaller wavelength and a little bit shifted away uh, from the center of our, our visible spectrum. Let's take another example. Here is uh, an example where I have a slab of material. It has an index N2. So it's that slab is located right here. I'm going to travel from it, a, a medium which with index N1, and I'm going to travel back into that same medium. So this is just like taking a pane of a window glass or a slab of plastic, something like that. The higher index material is right there in the middle. If I know what theta 1 is, I could ask you, could you tell me what theta two, 3 is, the angle that it leaves, the light leaves this slab? This is, again, a straight-up application of Snell's law. 
I apply Snell's law at this boundary, and I say, well, n1 times sine of theta1 has to equal n2 times sine of theta2. And I still don't know what theta2 is, but if I knew what n1 and n2 are, I would be able to get it. At the same time, I can also apply Snell's law at the second boundary, right there. And I would also know that n2 times sine of theta2 has to equal n3 times sine of theta3. And if I say that n3 is the same as n1, then not only is this equal to that, and that is equal to that, but then this is equal to my final step, n1 sine theta1 is equal to n1 sine theta3. And notice if I just divide both sides by n1, then I have sine of theta1 equals sine of theta3. Or in other words, the light exits the, the slab at exactly the same angle as it entered the slab. So if I have light going through a transparent window, the situation that's presented to me isn't too badly distorted because even though the light's coming from outside, something going on out in, the, in the sunlight and car passing by, whatever, the light coming through the window is coming through at exactly the same angle as it would have gotten to me if there had been no window there because the two surfaces here are parallel and theta 1 equals theta 3.